الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومطاعنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في القران المجيد والفرقان الحميد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا تتنزل عليهم الملائكه الا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا تتنزل عليهم الملائكه الا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وابشروا بالجنه التي كنتم توعدون نحن اولياؤكم في الحياه الدنيا وفي الاخره ولكم فيها ما تشتهي انفسكم ولكم فيها ما تدعون نزلا من غفور رحيم صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الا وان الدنيا ارض حاضر ياكل منه البر والفاجر الا وان الاخره اجل صادق يقضي فيها ملك عادل قادر يحق الحق ويبطل الباطل الا وان الخير كله بحذافيره في الجنه الا وان الشر كله بحذافيره في النار الا فاعملوا وانتم من الله على حذر واعلموا انكم معروضون على اعمالكم فمن يعمل مثقال ذره خيرا يره ومن يعمل مثقال ذره شرا يره او كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم respected ulama ikram elders beloved brothers in islam allah's greatness allah's azmat allah's kibriyai allah's jalal this is wara'ul wara beyond human comprehension akbar min kulli kabir aqwa min kulli qawi a'az min kulli aziz a'zam min kulli azim ajal min kulli jalil greater than anything with greatness more majestic than anything with majesty more powerful than anything with power more mighty than anything with might more glorious than anything with glory wa huwa alladhi fi as-sama'i ilah wa fi al-ardi ilah he is the ilah of the heavens he is the ilah of the earth this is a gathering of youngsters generally those who are embarking on the initial stages of their life one of the primary dictates ambitions goals is to acquire knowledge the reality my respected brothers is where does knowledge start what is knowledge knowledge in arabic the word is ilm allah in the imperative commands us in the quran i'lam acquire knowledge get ilm get knowledge allah commands but and we find that this verse allah says fa'lam fa'lam fa mufassirin explain they say this word fa in arabic allah did not say wa'lam or thumma i'lam wa'lam thumma i'lam that allows a little bit of delay allah brings the word fa fa bi ma'na al-fawr awwal ilm tasarra'u ta'allamu all this is contained in other words there is an emergency this is an immediate requirement knowledge starts here this is awwalu ilm this is the reality of knowledge this is alif ba ta sa this is true knowledge fa'lam what is it oh my allah annahu la ilaha illa allah rabbul mashriq wal maghrib la ilaha illa hu huwa allah alladhi la ilaha illa hu wa ilahukum ilahu wahid لا اله الا هو الرحمن الرحيم 
فإن تولوا فقل حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو شهد الله أنه لا إله إلا هو نو إن أندستان نو إن أندستان إت إز أونلي الله الله إز عزمت الله إز كبرياي الله إز جلال الله إز غريتنس الله إز ماجستي ذس إز بخر لا ساحل له ذس إز اللمتلس أوشن الله إز مؤذن five times every day just now we heard the azan this proclamation of allah's greatness allahu akbar allahu akbar allahu akbar allahu akbar literally translated allah is the greatest allah is the greatest allah is the most magnificent allah is the most glorious ask ourselves this question this call allahu akbar what is the effect on the heart what is the realization on the heart how many of us have identified with who is allah how many of us our hearts are brimming over with the recognition of allah allahu akbar allah is the greatest does it mean that the earth is small and allah is big does it mean the sun is small allah is big stars are small allah is big all of i explain they say that is ye to bachcho wali yaqeen this is the yaqeen and conviction of little children earth is small allah is big sky is small allah is big this type of comparison this is for little children allah loves this also allah allah loves that his praises should be sung allah's kalam allah's quran begins with this alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah all praise belongs to Allah ama inni lam akhluqkum li astakthira bikum min qilla wala li astanisa bikum min wahsha wala li astaina bikum ala amrin qad ajastu an hadith qudsi Allah says i did not create you because we numbered few and we wanted to increase our numbers I did not create you because we were lonely and we wanted company. I did not create you because there was some task that was too difficult for us to carry out and we needed helpers and assistants to carry out that task. No, no, no. اما اني لم اخلقكم لاستكثر بكم من قله ولا لاستانس بكم من وحشه ولا لاستعين بكم على امر قد اجزت عن انما خلقتكم لتعبدوني طويلا وتذكروني كثيرا وتسبحوني بكره واصيلا الله says الله says i created you so that you worship me i created you so that you sing my praises I created you so that you glorify me. I created you so that everything around us, whatever you see is inviting you to Allah's greatness. Whatever you hear is inviting you to Allah's greatness. Whatever you ponder about is inviting you towards Allah's greatness. This is bakhrun la sahil lahu. It's a limitless ocean. Allahu akbar. Allah is the greatest. What is the reality of this? these are not comparisons normally human beings our psyche is conditioned like this we tend to do comparisons if you want to talk of very very fast they say faster than the wind very very bright brighter than the sun very very beautiful more beautiful than the moon or more beautiful than the stars these are comparisons our psyche is made up like that but allah's zat allah's being Allah's greatness Allah's majesty laysa ka mithlihi shay there are no comparisons with Allah imagine whatever you want you will never be able to imagine the greatness of Allah two verses of the Quran Allah Taala explains this Allahu akbar Allah is the greatest Allah is the greatest Allah's azmat bring this alive on our tongues bring the zikr of allah the mention of allah the talk of allah in our schools in our universities the direction the the direction to acquire allah the way to get the closeness of allah the way to get the love of allah today you look at any look at human beings we are made up like that we know there's a famous tournament going on reality as ulama will sit on the member will denigrate it will say 22 people chasing behind a piece of pig skin what's the big deal who is getting rich only the bookmakers in reality stupendous amounts of money but 
Today, everywhere you go, in every environment, what's the talk? This team, that team, that player, this player. What is this? This is a manifestation of that which has become precious and beloved to us. If we love fashion, we'll talk about fashion. If we love sports, we talk about sports. If we love cars, we talk about cars. Human beings are designed like that. Allah has made us like that. We are coming into this maidan, this field, this environment. It's not being said to us. It's not being said to us. Speak. Give dawah. Speak of Allah's greatness. We don't have to be trained to do this. What is the reality? This is the road to acquire Allah's love. You want to connect with Allah? You want, to, you want this heart to be brimming over with Allah's love? A condition for this. A condition for this. A requirement for this. Is start speaking about Allah. Speak about the greatness of Allah. Speak about the majesty of Allah. Speak about the glory of Allah. How limitless the ocean is this? Coming back to what I was mentioning. Two verses of the Quran. Allah says, قُلْ لَوْ كَانَ الْبَحْرُ مِدَادًا لِكَلِمَاتِ رَبِّي لَنَفِذَ الْبَحْرُ قَبْلَ أَن تَنْفَذَ كَلِمَاتُ رَبِّي وَلَوْ جِئْنَا بِمِثْلِهِ مَدَدًا وَلَوْ أَنَّ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْ شَجَرَةٍ أَقْلَامٍ وَالْبَحْرُ يَمُدُّهُ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ سَبْعَةُ أَبْحُرُ مَا نَفِدَتْ كَلِمَاتُ اللَّهِ وَلَوْ أَنَّ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Allah says, مِنْ شَجَرَةٍ If all the trees on the surface of this earth have to be turned into pens. Many times before I've mentioned this, this expression, مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ does not refer to the trees that are currently on the earth. They estimate there are three trillion trees on the earth now. This means from the time Allah created the earth. How old is this universe? Scientists estimate 14.7 billion years. There's other estimations also. 23 billion years, 24 billion years based on carbon dating. True or untrue, Allah knows best. But hypothetically, if you have to assume, the universe is 14.7 billion years of age. Every tree that ever existed on the surface of the earth from the time it was created. The current three trillion trees. Every tree that will grow till Qiyamah. Quran is saying, and then the earth itself, this 24,000 kilometer ball, 29% is land. 71% is ocean. The vegetation in the ocean is more than the vegetation on the land. مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْ شَجَرَةٍ Allah is saying all this has to turn into tree. All these trees have to turn into pens. And then the waters of the ocean have to be turned into ink. Add another seven oceans to that. And then say to the entire creation of Allah, say to insan, say to jinnat, Let's start writing now. Use the pens, use the trees that have become pens. Use the waters of the ocean that have become ink. Multiply the seven times. The human brain, it said the average human being in his life will use about 6% of his brain. Some people 4 and 5%. We know in school also teachers are complaining, lazy, don't want to do this, don't want to do that. Depends on how much exertion you make. Einstein, when they exhumed his body, they found in his life he had used 11.2% of his brain. The question might arise, that if in the average lifespan, 5, 6, 7% of the brain is being used, why did Allah give us such a brain? If most of it is going to sleep for the whole life, you're not really going to use it. Ulama explain, they say the reason Allah gave you a brain like this is not really for this dunya, Allah gave it to you for Jannat. Because in Jannat the brain will be opened up 100% for you to experience fully the joys and pleasures of Jannat. But in this world, 4, 5, 6%. Hypothetically, if Allah opens up the brain 100%, you are given lifespan of Nuh alayhi salam. And the whole of insan, current world, world population, they say the 8 billion child was born. True unto Allah knows best. And I don't even know how they managed to count these figures. But in any case, maybe 8 billion insan, current world population. Every, every human being, start writing now. 100% mental capacity. 
the rest of Allah's creation, the trees, the birds, the insects, the animals, all this already, already Quran tells us, سَبَّحَ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Everything in the heavens and the earth is making tasbih of Allah, is glorifying Allah, is praising Allah. Subhan Quddusun, La ilaha illallah al Malikul Hakul Mubin. Every creation, wa imin shayin, illa yusabbihu bihamde, wala killa tafkahuna tasbihahum, to sabbihu lahu samawa to saba, wal arb, waman fihin. Quran tells us everything in the heavens, everything in the earth is making tasbih of Allah. Allah says to all all these creations, insan and jinnah that are writing, my tarif, my greatness, my kalimat, my kibriyai, my jalal, my azmat, you give them talqeen, tell them what to write, so that they don't have to pause for one second even, they don't have to think, the rest of Allah's creation is telling them what to write, now they are writing, the whole world population of insan, the whole population of jinnat, add the malaika to them. Jibreel, Mikail, Israfil, Israel. How many malaika did Allah create? How many malaika did Allah create? Allah tells us in the Quran, وَمَا يَعْلَمُ جُنُودَ رَبِّكَ إِلَّا هُ No one knows the armies of Allah besides Allah. Give one simple example. You can do a quick mathematical calculation. How many malaika did Allah create? It is said the Baytul Ma'mur is the Kaaba of the malaika. Every day from the time Malaika were created, just now we heard, more than 14 billion years, every day, every day, 70,000 Malaika make tawaf of Baytul Ma'mur. Qiyamat will come, one angel will not get a second chance. We can't count all these Malaika, the head of the Malaika, Jibrail, Mikail, Israfil, Israel, then say to Anbiya alayhimu salatu wasalam, Adam, Nuh, Ibrahim, Ismail, Ishaq, Yaqub, we know the galaxy, 25 or so names are mentioned in the Quran, but according to riwayat, one riwayat 124,000, one riwayat 200,000, Anbiya alayhimu salatu wasalam, they also start writing, using the trees that have become pens, using the waters of the oceans that have become ink, writing what? Kalimat of Allah, praises of Allah, Kibriyai of Allah, Jalal of Allah, Azmat of Allah. Say to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidul awwaleen wal akhireen. His knowledge, his knowledge is such. Wahab bin Munabba, rahimahullah says, Inna Allah ta'ala lam yu'ti jami'an nas min bad'i dunya ila inqidaiha min al-aqli al- al- fi jambi aqlihi illa ka habbati ramlin bayna rimal dunya He said if the combined uqul, intelligence of every human being from Adam alayhi salam to the last person to come before qiyamah had to be pooled together and equated to one grain of sand the aql, intelligence of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam would be all the grains of sand of the earth put together with that knowledge that knowledge what does allah say fa awha ila abdihi ma awha ma ma kunta tadri ma al kitab wala al iman walakin ja'alnahu nuran nahdi bihi man nasha min ibadina wa'allamaka ma lam takun ta'lam all these verses of the quran what are they telling us what are they telling us today if a person wants to acquire knowledge, he uses means, he uses tools, he uses his senses, he uses his perception. He depends upon books, he depends on other people's experience. This is how a person acquires knowledge. That's why sometimes it's correct, sometimes it's incorrect. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Listen with the ears of Iman, my respected brothers. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's knowledge is that knowledge which was un tainted by the human hand. There was no human interference. His knowledge came directly from the arsh of Allah. Allamaka ma lam takun ta'lam. And what knowledge? What knowledge? Oha ila abdihi ma oha. This ma creates a meaning limitless. Such a knowledge. Such knowledge Allah opened upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that it is mind-boggling. Yet, despite having that knowledge, what does he say? Allahumma la astati'u thana'an alayk, anta kama athnayta ala nafsik. The one whose name was Ahmad, 
Sammahu Ahmad. What does Ahmad mean? The one who praises Allah. He says, Oh my Allah, I cannot praise you as you ought to be praised. You are as you have praised yourself. Say to Jinnat, say to Insan, say to the Malaika, say to Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam, say to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, write now, write the kalimat of Allah, write the praises of Allah, write the kibriyai of Allah, write the jalal of Allah. How vast an ocean is this? How vast an ocean is this? Understand my respected brothers, Allah's azmat, Allah's kibriyai, Allah's jalal, one one sifat of Allah, one one quality of Allah. Time is very Limited. We've been, Dr. Sa, mashallah, in his elan just now, he said, don't worry, it's going to be a short bayan. My very good friend, Allah fill his cover with Nul Ali Khan Saab. Some of you may have met him. He passed away a few years ago. He always used to say the three rules of public speaking. Stand up to be seen, speak up to be heard, and shut up to be appreciated. I always say I'm still practicing on the third one. Putting a lengthy message briefly across, this is something, mashallah, some people have the ability. This was a miracle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given one quality, one of his multitudes of miracles was he was jawami'ul kalim. Jawami'ul kalim. What this means is that he sometimes he would say one sentence, volumes would be written on one sentence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Example of this, I'm not going to go into the detail. The one hadith, he said, Anzilun nasa manazilahum. Anzilun nasa manazilahum. Ulama say the whole of psychology is contained in this one hadith. Anzilun nasa manazilahum. Once Muhammad bin Shaybani, he was a scholar of hadith. He had written many books on the commentary of the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One day he's traveling, he's pulling a cart with him, loaded with the books that he wrote. There's one Jew standing on the roadside. He sees this. He asked the people, who is this person? They say, that's Muhammad bin Shaiban, famous Muslim scholar. What's all that, what he's got in the card? All the books that he wrote on the, com- on the commentary of the words of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There and then this Jew accepted Islam. So the people said, bhai, what happened here? We just described, told you what's in the card. Why you accepted Islam? What caused you to accept Islam? Beautifully, he put it in Urdu, ulama mentioned. They say, this Jew said, Agar chote Muhammad ke paas itne ulum hai, to bare Muhammad ke paas kitne ulum honge. If the small Muhammad has got knowledge like this, what must be the knowledge of the big Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Nevertheless, he himself says, Ya Allah, I cannot praise you as your... One example, one example, one verse of the Qur'an, Allah describes his ilm, Allah describes Allah's knowledge. وَعِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِحُ It is said 40,000 malaika. 40,000 malaika accompanied the revelation of just this one verse. وَعِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِحُ الْغَيْبِ لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا هُو وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَخَرِ وَمَا تَسْقُتُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا وَلَا حَبَّةٍ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْأَرْضِ وَلَا رَتْبٍ وَلَا يَابِسٍ Illa fi kitabim mubin. Allahu Akbar. This is Quran. This is Quran. And when Allah introduces Quran, what does Allah say? Thalika al kitab. Thalika al kitab. This is the book. La rayba fi. La rayba fi. There is absolutely no doubt in this Quran. In this kalam. There is no doubt in it. Hudan lil muttaqeen. Allah says it is hidayat. It is hidayat for the people of taqwa. I'm taking, I'm digressing. Because this is very, very important. The challenge that we face today in our schools, in our universities, every direction the forces of batil are working. To do what? To create, to plant the seed of doubt. Plant the seed of doubt. Today they will show you unnatural behavior. Where human beings behave worse than animals. Then to plant the seed of doubt they'll say this is normal. Normal natural inclination. This is normal natural. And to question this. To question this. Previously they themselves realized. That this is immoral behavior. Person needs psychiatric treatment. Now, with the advancing of time to take us towards animalism, they will plant the seed of doubt. That's a natural tendency. Why do you question that? We have the Qur'an. We have the Qur'an. We have Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is the challenge that faces us. Whatever is brought in front, whatever is brought in front, if it conforms to Qur'an, 
If it conforms to Quran, Amanna wa Saddaqna, we will believe we have accepted. If it goes against Quran, if it goes against the kalam of my Allah, if it goes against the ulum which came to us through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is the requirement? From inside, from inside, from the heart, from the depths of the heart. My respected brothers, the challenge that faces us is to with one voice negate that and bring iman on what the Quran says. Negate that and bring iman on what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said. Then this Quran will become hidayat. Then the Quran is hidayat. That is why the link. La rayba fi. Allah says no doubt. Hudal lil muttaqeen. Hidayat mentioned immediately thereafter. Why? Nowadays you travel to some first world countries, you go to some universities, first world countries. The dean, the dean of the department of Islamic studies, sometimes it's a scholar that wrote a matchless commentary on the Quran, yet he's a Jew, yet he's a Christian, sometimes he's an atheist, wrote a commentary, detailed commentary on the Quran, yet the same Quran was not hidayat for him, why? Why? Because he did not fulfill the first condition. What condition? La rayba fi. La rayba fi. Every letter of this Quran, every harf of this Quran, every nukta of this Quran. This is kalamullah. This is tanzil. Mimman khalaq al arda wa samawat al ula. Ar rahmanu ala al arsh istawa. Lahu ma fi al samawat. Wa ma fi al ard. Wa ma baynahuma. Wa ma taht al thara. Wa in tajhar bil qawl. Fa inna له يعلم السر وأخفى الله لا إله إلا هو له الأسماء الحسنى this is تنزيل وإنه لتنزيل رب العالمين نزل به الروح الأمين على قلبك لتكون من المنذرين بلسان عربي مبين this is حاميم والكتاب المبين إنا جعلناه قرآنا عربيا لقوم يعلمون بشيرا ونذيرا this is تنزيل من الرحمن الرحيم this is لا يأتيه الباطل من بين يديه ولا من خلفه تنزيل من حكيم حميد this is أفلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا Allah kept his name Noor Allah gave the Quran the name Noor Allah kept his name Hakim Allah gave the Quran the name Hakim Allah kept his name Majid Allah gave the Quran the name Majid قاف والقرآن المجيد ياسين والقرآن الحكيم واتبعوا النور الذي أنزل معه This is Quran to doubt one nukta one harf one letter one exclamation one statement of Quran is kufr from inside from inside from inside this la rayba fi the school can say what it wants university can say what it wants the so called archives of intelligence of the world can say what is what they want scientists can say what they want academia can say what they want my allah has spoken the truth my allah has spoken the truth wa bil haqq anzalna wa bil haqq nazal zalikumu allah rabbukum al haqq فماذا بعد الحق إلا الضلال وتمت كلمة ربك صدقا وعدلا لا مبدل لكلماته لا تبديل لكلمات الله إنه لقول فصل وما هو بالهزل All these verses one basic message don't be deceived we want jannat we want akhirat we want to find Allah we want Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be happy with us my respected brothers Quran is حق take out any doubt from this heart Take out any doubt. Take it out. Remove it from this heart. Whatever. Whether we understand it. Whether we don't understand it. La rayba fi. There is absolutely no doubt in what the Quran has said. Hudallil muttaqeen. Then this Quran will become hidayat. Then this Quran is such. Inna fil jannati nahran. Ismuhu rayyan. Alayhi madinatun min marjan. Lahu sab'oona alfa baab. Min, min zahabin wa fidda. Lihamil al-Quran. My Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, In jannat is one stream. Inna fil jannati nahran. Its name is rayyan. Above it is the palace of marjan. Marjan has 70,000 doors. Made out of gold and silver. For who is this? For who is this? For who is this? Lihamil al-Quran. For the one who will devote himself to the Quran. 
such a Qur'an, this ummah was given. Coming back to this verse of the Qur'an, there is no doubt, there is no exaggeration, there is no ambiguity in Qur'an. Allah, in this one verse, 40,000 malaika accompanies His revelation. Allah opens up for us the ilm of Allah, the knowledge of Allah. وَعِنْدَهُ by Allah, مَفَاتِحُ الْغَيْبِ are the keys to the unseen. لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا هو. No one has this knowledge besides Allah. And then, Quran goes further to describe, this is Dawud, this is that talk that we have to bring on our tongues. This is where, gali gali, ali ali, speak about Allah, the azmat of Allah, the greatness of Allah, the kibriyai of Allah, the jalal of Allah. وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحَرِ Take this one exclamation of Quran, one statement. وَيَعْلَمْ Allah knows. Ma Ma in Arabic means everything. Living, non-living. Animate, inanimate. يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحَرِ Allah knows everything on the land, everything in the ocean. How many insects? Insects, one tiny creation of Allah. They say the two most intelligent insects, the one we are familiar with, one is ants, the other is bees. But, how many, actually how many different types of insects did Allah create? They say there are 10 million different types of insects. Just insects. One alam. 10 million different types of insects. How many insects did Allah create? He said the world population, if you put them on one pan of the scale, the weight of the insects is 70 times more than the weight of all the human beings. Ants. One tiny creation of Allah, one type of insect. There are 12,000 different species of ants. How many ants did Allah create? They estimate, they say 20 quadrillion. MashaAllah, they use very fancy terms. But layman's terms understand what is quadrillion. They say take the number 20, add 15 zeros in front of it. That is the number of ants that Allah has created. Estimation. Make it even simpler. They say for every... One human being, there are two and a half million ants. What is Quran telling us? Hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu join it with this. Twenty quadrillion ants. My Nabi describes one ant. He says, late at night, dark. One is the cover of the darkness of the night. One is the cover of the darkness of the rock. One is the cover of one rock over another rock, the shadow and the shade. One is the cover of the color of the ant which is black. Black night, black rock, black crevice, black silk. This ant is walking. Allahu Akbar. What does Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa say? He says, Yara dabiban namlati sauda ala sakhrati samma fi laylati dhalma. He says, my Allah's sight is such that Allah doesn't just see this black ant on a black rock on a black night, no. Dabib. Dabib is when the ant walks, it leaves behind an invisible imprint on the silt of the rock. That is Dabib. He says, my Allah sees that also. وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحَرِ Allah has knowledge of every ant, every insect, every worm, every virus. Coronavirus of the whole world put together will fit in one can. Every virus, every Creation, move wider, birds, insects, animals, trees, industries, stars. How many stars? How many stars? The sun we look up is one star. Circumference of the sun, 1,394,000 kilometers. 1.3 million earths will fit in the one star. That is the sun. How many stars has Allah created? How many stars? They ex estimate again. Estimation. They say there's only light in the universe, 3 to 5 percent. That's all we can see. The rest of it is dark matter, dark energy. What is there we can't see. In the 3 to 5 percent that we can see, they estimate there are 7 sextillion stars. Again, fancy terms. What this means? Take 7, add 23 zeros in front of it. That is the number of stars. You want to make it even more simpler? They say number of grains of sand on the earth multiplied by ten times is the number of stars in three percent of the universe. Samaud dunya. Wa ma fil barri wal bahar. Everything in the land, 
everything in the ocean is in the knowledge of Allah. Innaha in taku misqala khabbatim min khardal fatakun fi sakhra o fi samawat o fi al-ard ya'ti biha Allah. Join this verse with another verse where Allah says that action which you do that action which you do, if it is smaller than a grain of mustard seed, Quran uses the word dharra. What is dharra? Ulama explain, they say dharra is juz la yatajazza. Again, fancy term. What it means in simple terms, they say if, if you want to look for something very small, how do you discern which is the smallest particle? You divide something, and then you divide it, and then you divide it, and then you divide it, till it reaches a point where it becomes indivisible. Smallest possible particle. Previously they thought it was the atom. Now they found that million the size of the atom is the proton and the neutron. So, dharra, smallest possible particle. Allah says that action which you do, if it is equivalent to one dharra, hidden underneath a rock, somewhere in the heavens, somewhere in the earth, the knowledge of my Allah, ya'ti Allah. that day is coming, Allah will bring even this action in front of Today it has become easy for us to disobey Allah. It has become easy for us to turn our backs on our Allah. It has become easy for us to look in other directions. Why? Because we haven't understood who is Allah. Shibli rahimullah used to say, Lo, 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 arafun nas, lo, arafun nas, qadra azamatillah, ma so. If the people had to come to know the extent of the azmat of my Allah, ma so, it would become impossible for them to disobey Allah. Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam, our beloved master, Janabi Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this was the first effort in Establish Allah's greatness in this heart. Bring Allah. Bring Allah. And then, whatever challenge will come, whatever temptation will come, whatever invitation to wrong will come, we are insan. We are prone to error. We will make mistakes. We will make mistakes. But, but if, Allah, if we have found Allah, if Allah is in this heart, the doors of Allah's mercy are open. As the Mahisul Sahib Rahmatullahi in his Hayatul Sahaba, he mentions one incident. Shabun Mutabbid, there was a youngster who was always in the ibadat of Allah, always worshipping Allah. So much ibadat this youngster used to make that he even impressed Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala. Personality like Umar was impressed by this youngster. But this youngster, what was the temptation? Every day when he used to leave the majlis of Umar, Radiallahu ta'ala anhu, as he used to go home, he used to pass by the home of a very, very beautiful woman. Ma taraktu fitnatan, ma taraktu fitnatan, adar ala rijal minan nisa. My Nabi Salaam said, I have not left behind, I have not left behind, I have not left behind any fitna, any test, any trial, any tribulation. More harmful and more dangerous and more delicate for the men of my women, for the men of this ummah than women. This test is there. We see it in our schools, we see it in our universities. When you go for gush to some of the universities, nowadays cry tears of blood. What is going on with our masturat? What type of environment, what type of temptation there is there? This girlfriend, boyfriend culture, this culture of intermingling. Today, unfortunately, there is a drive to halalize this. Make this halal, make this permissible. Islam is a contemporary religion. Islam keeps up with the times. Under the banners of gender equality, under the banners of feminism, under the banners of female emancipation, all types of fancy things from different directions. What is behind this? Break down this barrier. Break down this barrier. My respected youth, Khan Kol Karsun Lena, listen with the ears of Iman. Allah has given you that jewel. Allah has given you that taqat. Allah has given you that power. There is Allahu Akbar, such a power Allah has blessed each one of you with, that the noor of it will outshine the sun. 
The power which Allah has given you, the power of it is such that Allah will subjugate the malaika for you. Allah will subjugate the powers of the heavens and the earth for you. You will have a direct link with the arsh of Allah. If you will develop this one power that I am speaking about, what power is that? The power to lower your gaze. Lower your gaze. Lower your gaze. Lower your gaze. قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُدُّوا مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ Allah commands us in the Quran, say unto the believers, lower your gaze. وَيَغُدُّوا مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ وَيَحْفَذُوا فُرُوجَهُمْ Guard your chastity. Lower your gaze. Guard your chastity. ذَلِكَ أَزْكَى لَهُمْ And this is purity for you. Such purity. That will elevate you above the malaika. Many youngsters come. They say, Mawlana, you know what? I can't concentrate in namaz. I hear about the virtue of tahajjud. Waking up for tahajjud. Getting up and crying before Allah at night. I just can't do it. I'm trying. I can't do it. Just, just as wudu is a condition for salah. Without wudu there is no salah. Listen with the ears of iman, my respected brothers. For the sweetness of tahajjud, for the sweetness of salah, for the sweetness of tilawat al-Quran. And don't make any mistake. Allah has kept that sweetness, that sweetness, that maza, that ecstasy on the musalla in his ibadat that wallah in the dens of haram and vice and drugs and whatever else they are searching for, you will never taste the type of sweetness that Allah has kept on the musalla. Why? Because that lazza, that ecstasy that Allah has kept in his ibadat, Laysat minat dunya, it's not from this dunya. Innaha minal jannah, it is from jannah. That lazzat Allah has kept in his ibadat is from jannah. Allah gives it to certain people in this world. Who? What is the road to that? What is the road to that? Rasulullah s.a.w. said, An-nadratu sahmun masmum min sihami iblis. An-nadratu sahmun masmum min sihami iblis. He said this gaze, letting your gaze free, is one of the most poisonous of the arrows of shaitan. Man tarakaha min maqafati. Man tarakaha min maqafati. Man tarakaha min maqafati. Allah says, Allah says, lower your gaze out of the fear of Allah. Bring Allah in front of you. Bring the consciousness of Allah. Bring the khawf of Allah. Many years ago when our jamaat was in Singapore, Singapore, that environment, Allahu Akbar, you don't know where to look also. You don't know where to look, the temptation in every direction. I met one youngster, Allahu Akbar, you could see the nur of iman on the face of this youngster. So I asked him, tell me a little bit about yourself. He says, you know, when I go to school, when I go to the universities, his, his job was such, he, was, he had to constantly go to the universities. He says, there the girls, Muslim girls are asking me, what are you, a sister hater? What's wrong with you? Why don't you look at us? Why are you looking down? What you can see down? What's there? What's down? Look at me. Look at me. Don't look down. He says, whenever they tell me that, I say, he says, you know what? I have to look down. They say, what you can see down? He says, I can see the qabr. I can see the qabr. Man tarakaha min maqafati. Man tarakaha min maqafati. The one who will lower his gaze. Allahu Akbar. Coming back to that incident. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. This youngster, every day he would go home, beautiful woman. She tried everything, everything to entice him towards haram. One day in a moment of weakness. Why we are insan? Weakness will come, mistakes will come. Allah is very merciful. In a moment of weakness, he fell into her trap. Now he's entering her home. He's entering her home. As he's entering the home, the verse of the Quran comes in front. Inna al-ladina taqaw Ida massahum Ta'ifum min ash-shaytan Tadhakkaru Faida hum mubsirun Allah describes the people of taqwa Those who have found Allah Those who have connected with Allah Allah says verily the people of taqwa When the When the temptation of shaytan Touches them Tadhakkaru Allah says, we send a reminder. We send a reminder. Their imani ghayrat rises up. Their consciousness of Allah rises up. That my Allah is looking at me. My Allah is looking at me. And when this happened, فَإِذَاهُمْ مُبْسِرُونَ Immediately they desist. 
When this verse of the Quran came in front of this youngster, he was about to commit zina, about to commit that sin which iman doesn't even tolerate. It leaves the body of a person. That when the realization dawned upon him, this youngster fell down unconscious. This woman became afraid. With a servant she carried him, left him at the door of his elderly father, knocked the door and went away. Father opened the door, he sees his unconscious son in front of the door. He calls the family people, they drag him inside the house. Then they revive him. When they revive him, the father is alarmed. My son, what happened? What happened? What happened? He says, oh my father, khair happened. Good happened. Allah blessed me. Allah was kind to me. Allah was merciful to me. So this father says, relate to me the incident. What actually happened? The youngster hesitantly describes what had happened. That every day this woman was trying to entice him. Today she was successful. But before he could go, before he could commit wrong, this verse of the Quran came in front of him. His father said, what was the verse of the Quran? What was the verse of the Quran? Again this youngster recites, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا إِذَا مَسَّهُمْ طَائِفٌ مِّنَ الشَّيْطَانِ تَذَكَّرُوا فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْصِرُونَ Allah says the people of taqwa, when the touch of shaitan will come, when the temptation of shaitan will come, we will remind them, they will be reminded, and when they are reminded, فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْصِرُونَ They will desist from the wrong. This time, when he recites this verse of the Qur'an, such an effect it has upon him that he breathes his last and he passed away. Father buries him. Family buries him. Next day Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala who comes to know what had happened. Umar like the wind. Umar, that personality who my Nabi Islam said, Lo kana ba'di nabiyun lakana Umar. If there to be a Nabi after me, it would have been Umar. Umar when he hears about this, he goes to the grave of this youngster. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu stands in front of that grave and he says, Ya fata, O youngster, waliman, khafa maqama rabbihi, jannata for the one who will fear that day when he has to stand in front of Allah temptation will be there temptation will be there haram will be in front whether it's that shaitan box in our homes which is polluting our families and our homes whether it's the school whether it's the napak environment whether it's where we are working every direction temptation will be there but the one who will have developed the consciousness of Allah who will fear that day when he has to stand in front of Allah. Wali man khafa maqama rabbihi. Jannatan. Allah won't give him jannat. Allah will give him two jannats. Allah will give him two jannats. From the grave. From the grave. From the grave. The voice comes. Ya Amir al Mu'minin. O Amir al Mu'minin. Umar. Allah has given me both jannats. Allah has given me both jannats. Such a taqat. Such a power. Allah has given us. Every youngster has this power to draw from Allah's treasures, to connect with Allah, to subjugate to the malaika. Coming back to that hadith, Allah says, Man tarakaha min makafati, lower your gaze out of my khawf, out of my azmat, out of my recognition. One other incident comes to mind, time is limited, but nevertheless, Umay bin Habib, rahimahullah, Alama ibn Kasir in his Bidaya wa Nihaya mentions this incident. He was, it was the Banu Umayya Khilafat. This Jamaat that was striving in the path of Allah is taken captive. Robust young Arab youngsters. Nine of them, eight are made shaheed. Umayr bin Habib was particularly handsome. The Roman king took a liking to him. So he offered him, my daughter, beautiful young Roman princess. We can do the maths, visualize. I don't have to go into details. Beautiful young Roman princess. Marriage to her, limitless wealth. Get married to my daughter, but abandon your deen. Abandon your religion. Umair bin Habib says to the Roman king, Give me everything you want, everything you have, not for one second will I abandon the deen of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So what he does? Puts him, locks him up, locks him up in a room. Sharab is there. Pork is there. This beautiful young princess, naked, is put in the one room with Umair bin Habib. Imagine, one side, Arab youngster, other side, beautiful Roman princess, naked. This is like what? Fire and oil putting it together. But, 
for any for conflagration to happen, for anything to happen, he has to look. He has to at least look. Allahu Akbar, such khawf of Allah, such khashiyat of Allah, such consciousness of Allah. Three days, three nights pass. She tries everything. He doesn't even look at her. He doesn't even raise his gaze to look at her. Finally, after three days and three nights, exasperated. She doesn't know which way to turn. She says, what is the matter with you? What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Why don't you look at me? Then he speaks. And he says, there is one zat and one being. Al-ghaybu indahu shahada. Wasirru indahu alaniya. La ta'khuduhu sina wala noom. There is one zat and one being. The secrets are known to him. The hidden is apparent to him. He does not sleep. He does not doze off. Ma kana rabbuka nasiya. My Rabb doesn't forget anything. لا يعزب عن ربك من مثقال ذرة. Not one ذرة is hidden from my رب. لا تحسبن الله غافلا. My Allah is not غافل. My Allah is not negligent of anything for one millisecond in the heavens and the earth. He says, O oh woman, it is the fear of my Allah that does not allow me to look at you. This girlfriend boyfriend culture, this culture of music. Today we look at our youth. Both ears, both ears are clogged. The body is jiving, shaking. To what? To haram music. What they say, music is food for the soul. Music is food for the soul. My respected brothers, that which my Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said, Sadaqa Rasulullah, my Nabi spoke the truth. He said, Al-ghina yumbitun nifaqa fil qalb, kama yumbitul ma'u zara. He said, like how water, like how water, like how water will cause crops to grow. Listening to the haram music of this world will cause nifaq and hypocrisy to grow in your heart. Ulama say, what is the sign of this? You can't see the nifaq. You can't go to a doctor, he's not going to do an angiogram or do an ECG and tell you there's nifaq in the heart. What is the sign of this? Allah protect us. Ulama say the sign of this is that the time of mort to recite kalima will become difficult. To recite kalima at the time of death will become difficult. These are intertwined, they go together. Music and shamelessness. Music and Bekhayai, music and Awargi, looseness of the gaze, these are intertwined, these are intertwined, these are intertwined. Understand the harm, understand the harm. Two hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Stay away, stay away, stay away from the haram music of this world. What will Allah give you? I'm joining the two hadith and... Presenting what the meaning that my Nabi presents. He says, مَا مِنْ عَبْدٍ يَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةِ إِلَّا وَيَجْلِسُ عِنَّ رَأْسِهِ وَعِنَّ رِجْلَيْهِ ثِنْتَانِ مِنَ الْحُورِ الْعِينِ تُغَنِّيَانِهِ بِأَحْسَنِ صَوْتِ مَا سَمِعَ الْإِنسُ وَالْجِنِّ مِثْلَهَا Oh, the other hadith, O oh, Allah Ta'ala, ila shajaratil janna, an isma'i, ibadi alladheena shagalu anfusahum, anil ma'azifi wal qaynaad, fatusmi'ahum bisawt, ma sami'a al ins wal jinnaha, my nabi, wal jinn mitlaha, oh kama qala al nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, stay away from the haram women of this world, Allah says in the Quran, wazawajanahum bihurin ayin, we will marry you tomorrow to the women of Jannah, to the maidens of Jannah. Stay away from the haram music of this world. What will Allah give you? Allah's Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi in these two ahadith, He paints a picture. He says, that youngster, that youngster that blocked his ears from the haram music of this world, Allah will appoint two hoors of Jannah to sit at his head and two hoors to sit at his feet. These are women of such indescribable beauty that the Qur'an does not get tired of describing them. وَحُورٌ عِينٌ كَأَمْثَالِ اللُّؤْلُؤِ الْمَكْنُونَ جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ فِيهِنَّ خَيْرَاتٌ حِسَانٌ حُورٌ مَقْصُورَاتٌ فِي الْخِيَامِ لَمْ يَتْمِثْهُنَّ إِنْسٌ قَبْلَهُمْ وَلَا جَانٌ 
كأنهن الياقوت والمرجان كأنهن بيض مكنون عربا أدرابا الله أكبر so many verses just one one or two descriptions مفسرين have given عربا أدرابا كواعب أدرابا عربا أدرابا they say متحببات Muta'ashiqat. What this means in layman's terms, one of our Kabirin translates it like this. He says, women that have a PhD in giving ishq and muhabbat. Women that have a PhD in giving ecstasy. In the sway of her hips, just as she walks, in the sway of her hips, there will be 100,000 suggestions and invitations towards ecstasy. In aqbalat or adbarat, hiya muqbila. When she is walking towards you or walking away from you, she'll still be looking at you. What is the beauty? Allahu Akbar, such beauty it comes in the riwayat that, that forget anything else. There will be such ecstasy in just looking that the first gaze, the first gaze, the first gaze, one riwayat forty years, one riwayat seventy years, and there is even one riwayat five hundred years. Just Staring, transfixed, locked, mesmerized at the beauty of this woman. Such beauty Allah has given the women of Jannah. She will, this person after looking and looking and looking, finally she's going to ask that why are you only going to look? You will be so shocked, so shocked that you'll say, who are you? Who are you? In other words, I never... I couldn't imagine something like you existed. Who are you? What will she say? Ana zawjatuki wa I am your wife. I am your beloved. Women of dunya shouldn't get worried. They shouldn't get worried. Why? Because Allah has given the women of dunya 70,000 times more beauty than these women. But this beauty is such. Today you get a youngster, mashallah. You know, somebody sent me a message the other day. Why do men prefer beauty to brains? Why do men prefer beauty to brains? The answer was given because they can see better than they can think. Sometimes you get a youngster, that the background is not there. Totally inappropriate. The relationship will never work out. What he's doing, he's only looking at the eye candy. A lot of times youngsters say, you know what, Molana, I want Miss Universe. I say, bye, go look at the mother first, before you look for Miss Universe. Because that Miss Universe also wants something. When she looks at you, watch Imam Ismail Rahimullah was a great linguistic scholar. Great Imam. He, he, he was an expert in Arabic linguistics. The detail, I'm not going to go into the detail. Allah made it such that he wasn't easy on the eye. We won't use the term ugly. But he wasn't easy on the eye. And his nasib, his wife was very beautiful. One day she's looking at the mirror. Then she looks at him. And she says, you know what, we both are jannatis. She says, how you arrived at that conclusion? She says, you know what, every time I look at you, I make sabr. Allah is going to give me a jannat of sabr. Every time you look at me, you make shukar. Allah is going to give you a jannat of shukar. <laughs> but today you say, you, the youngster looks, it's carried away. Parents say it's inappropriate. She has to be a mother. She has to look after. No, 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 no. I'm madly in love. I'll kill myself. I'll commit suicide. I have to have her. So madly in love. That once the nikah takes place, what happens after that? One month later, he's crying. Now he's looking this way, looking that way. Women of Jannah, women of Jannah, Allahu Akbar, that beauty is such, that beauty is such, that beauty is such. Allahu Akbar. One of our kafirin gives this example. He says, you know, first time I went to Canada, they told me, Manana, let me take you to Niagara Falls. So he said, okay, no problem, Niagara Falls. Let me go see what's Niagara Falls. So he went there, very impressed, Niagara Falls, beautiful waterfall, whatever. Second trip to Canada, they said, Manana, you know what, you want to go to Niagara Falls, come we'll take you. He said, alright, one time I went, so took him second time, went, saw Niagara Falls. Third time when Canada, they said, Manana, you want to go, hey, hey bye, it's only a waterfall, how many times are you going to take me there? That is, the dun- that is the beauty of this dunya, no matter how beautiful, one time, second time, third time, fourth time, then you want a new model after that. Jannat, Jannat by the qasam of my Allah who created Jannat. 
you will look transfixed at the beauty. When you look away and look back, it will have become 70 times more beautiful. Look away and look back 70 times more beautiful. Such a jannat. Such a jannat. Coming back to this riwayat, my Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, two hoors at the head, two hoors at the feet, the rest of jannat, the qusur, the anhar, the palaces, the rivers, the streams, this will form the background orchestra. This will form the background orchestra. They will start playing music. These hoors, two at the head, two at the feet, they will start singing. Start singing. If their faces have such beauty, what beauty Allah has kept in their voice? My Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, No insan, no jinnad has ever heard anything as magical and mesmerizing as the song of the women of Jannah. For whom is this? For whom is this? For whom is this? Sadaqa Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam My Nabi said it is for the one who will block his ears from the haram music of this world. Understand the loss. Understand the loss. Coming back to this incident. This young girl goes back to the king. Ayyuhal Malik. Ila man arsaltani. To whom did you send me? Ila hajarin or hadidin. Did you send me to a piece of steel? Did you send me to a piece of stone? La yakul wa la He doesn't eat. He doesn't look. But this reaction affected the heart. Affected the heart of this kafir young girl. She said, you are a jewel of humanity. She went back to that youngster and she said, you are a jewel of humanity. I take an oath. I take an oath. I will never allow you to perish. What she does, historically it is recorded, late that night she prepares some halal food. She prepares a horse. She goes to this youngster. She breaks him free and then she tells him, Keep the certain star on your right hand side and start traveling. Travel at night, don't travel at day. This is the provision. Eventually you will reach Iraq, you will reach back to where you came from. The enemy worked for the emancipation of that youngster. Such was the effect of Iman. Such was the effect of Deen. Such was the effect of adherence to the commands of Allah. Coming back to that hadith. Man tarakaha min maqafati. Allah says lower your gaze. Lower your gaze. Lower your gaze out of the khaf of Allah. And what is the jewel Allah will give you? Bad nazri. Freedom of gaze. My respected brothers. My respected youth. Listen with the ears of Iman. Freedom of gaze is such a poison, such a poison, such a poison. There is no serum for that poison. Freedom of gaze is such a darkness. There is no darkness like that in this world. Freedom of gaze. One thousand Junaid Baghdadis put together will never be able to guide you if you will allow your gaze to become free. One thousand shaitan will never be able to deviate you if you will lower your gaze. May Allah promises, ma min muslimin, yanzuru ila mahasini imra'a, thumma yaguddu basara, thumma yaguddu basara, illa ahdath Allahu lahu biha ibadatan, yajidu halawatahu fi qalbihi. That person who will lower his gaze, both hadith to put together. What is the mafum of the hadith? Not literal translation. Allah says, I will give you jannat on this earth. I will give you jannat in my ibadat. I will give you jannat in tilawat of Quran. I will give you jannat in fasting. I will give you jannat in tahajjud. I will give you jannat in striving in the path of Allah. I will give you jannat in taking the name of Allah. If you will lower your gaze. Lower your gaze. This boyfriend, girlfriend culture, this intermingling is a poison. Such a poison that today Allah protect us even after, even after, even after nikah, the door to zina is not closed. Why? Because of this intermingling. This intermingling. Allah has created this barrier. Allah has created his barri- this barrier. My Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, look at his example. Look at the chastity. Look at the piety. Look at the day of Rasulullah. The night of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is the cry of our elders. Again, I am digressing every one of the youth here. Make this ahad. Make this promise that inshallah, from today onwards we are going to establish the halqa of ta'ali in our homes, say inshallah. Every one of us. Today in the homes, today we know what is there. We don't like to talk about these things. Techno gadgets, plasma screens, instruments of zina. Zulmat has entered the homes of the ummah. Zulmat has entered the homes. The other day, yesterday in Juma, I was mentioning, few years ago our Jamaat was in Jiza. That's a small village in Jordan. To get there, 
to get to that village, literally, it was all, such a thin, such a road up a mountain pass in a bus we were going, that at times we thought that bus is going to topple over the side of the mountain. Right, it, see, this place was so backwards, it seemed like the clock of time had passed it by. In, I remember in that town we went for gush, we met one person. One person was living inside a cave, literally inside a cave. His home reminded us of Sahaba, there was no furniture. His bed was a, was a slab of stone. And on it was just a thin chadar or cloak. That was his bed. There was nothing else. One primer stove in his house. Nothing else. And yet, in this backward village, that level of poverty, home by home, the satellite dish was there. That is the extent to which Batil is working. That is the extent to which Batil is working. We have to wake up to the reality. We have to wake, we are the ummah of the Qur'an. We are the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Coming back to that verse of the Qur'an, I'm running out of time. Allah opens up before us the ilm of Allah, the knowledge of Allah. وَعِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِحُ الْغَيْبِ By Allah are the keys to unseen. لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا هُ No one but my Allah knows this. وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ Everything on the land, everything in the oceans is in the knowledge of Allah. Allahu Akbar. Then, was, then what does Allah say? وَمَا تَسْقُتُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا This is Qur'an, this is Qur'an, this is Haq. Such is the knowledge of my Allah that Allah says, currently they estimate three trillion trees on the earth, not a single leaf falls from a single tree, but it is in the knowledge of Allah. وَمَا تَسْقُتُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا وَلَا حَبَّةٍ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْأَرْضِ You look at the ground, what you see? Sand. Dig underneath, it's total darkness. There's no light there. Quran says, there isn't a grain, there isn't a grain, there isn't a grain in the zulmat and the darkness of the earth. Except that it is in the knowledge of Allah. وَلَا رَتْبٍ وَلَا يَابِسٍ There isn't a green or a fresh thing. There isn't a dry or a withered thing. إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ Except that it is... Allah Akbar. Not just in Allah's knowledge. Allah says, فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ Recorded. كُلُّ صَغِيرٍ وَكَبِيرٍ مُسْتَطَرْ Every small, every large, every significant, every insignificant. Every creation of Allah. Every mosquito, every ant, every worm, every insect, every virus. Mustatar Its existence is written down Recorded by Allah We haven't understood who is Allah We haven't This, this is awwalu ilm This is where knowledge starts Bring Allah's azmat Bring Allah's kibriyai Bring Allah's jalal Wasi'a kursiyuhu samawati wal ard Wasi'a sam'ahu al-aswad Tabarak al-ladhi Wasi'a sam'ahu al-aswad Ahata basaruhu bi jameel mar'iyyad Allahu ya'lamu ma tahmilu kullu unsa Wa ma taghidu al-arham Wa ma tazdad Wa kullu shay'in indahu bi miqdar Alimu al-ghaybi al-shahadati al-kabiru al-muta'al Sawa'un minkum Man asar al-qawl Wa man jahara bih Wa man huwa mustaghfim bil-layl Wa saribun min nahar Inna rabbakum Allah Alladhi khalaq al-samawati wal-ard Fi sitati ayyam ثم استوى على العرش يغشي الليل النهار يطلبه حثيثا والشمس والقمر والنجوم مسخرات بأمره ألا له الخلق والأمر تبارك الله رب العالمين إن القوة لله جميعا لله الأمر من قبل ومن بعده القرآن الذس Allah's azman, Allah's kibriyai, Allah's jalal do not deprive ourselves of this 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 um, Hazrat Mawla Ilyas Sahib Rahmatullah used to say, the first bid'at, the first bid'at that came into the ummah was the taking of the name of Allah without the greatness of Allah in the heart. Mawla Yusuf Sahib Rahmatullah used to say, we are not saying to you, we are not saying to you, come out for chilla and three chilla, just now in a few minutes tashkil is going to take place. We are not saying to you because this is some scheme that was thought up to prepare people to go for 40 days and 4 months. We are not saying to you, come out in the path of Allah for that. That is, we want to increase membership or we want to increase numbers in organization. No. We are saying to you, we are saying to you, speak of the greatness of Allah. Come out in this environment. Come out in the path of Allah. Raise Allah's name. Him the praises of Allah. Glorify my Allah. Why? Why? Allahu Akbar. Because it is the right of Allah. It is the right of Allah that His praises should be sung. Coming back to that expression in the beginning we said, Allahu Akbar. Put these two verses 
verses together, the trees become pens, the waters of the ocean become ink, the entire creation of Allah right now, right now, right now, Lana Fidal Bahru, Kablan Tanfada Kalimatu Rabbi, Walaujina Bimitlihi Madada, the pens will come to an end, the waters of the oceans will come to an end, multiplied seven times, insan will perish, jinnat will perish, ambiya will perish, malaika will perish, Allah's kalimat, Allah's tarif, Allah's kibriyai, Allah's jalal will never ever come to an end. Allahu Akbar. Every one of you imagine Allah's greatness with everything that you have. All this put together and Allah's greatness is even greater than that. This was the day and night of our beloved master, Muhammadur Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, alley to alley, gully to gully. This dar, this pain, this concern, this worry. Connect one one person with Allah. Connect one one person with Allah. I'm going to terminate on one incident. Among Sahaba, many, many Sahaba had special distinctions. It is our aqidah. Ijma, consensus of the ummah that the greatest sahabi was Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. But there were special, special distinctions that various sahaba had. Amongst them, amongst the galaxy of sahaba, one speciality Mu'az bin Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu had. What was that speciality? That Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi addressed him directly and said, Ya Mu'az, inni uhibbuk. O Mu'az, I love you. O oh, Mu'ad, I love you. Yet six months before the demise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he could have waited six months more. But still, such was the demand of Dawat and Tabligh that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sends Mu'az to Yemen six months before his demise. Such is the bond of love between Habib and Mahbub that Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sending one Sahabi out in the path of Allah making alwida with him. My Nabi is walking. Mu'az is on the camel. Such is the pain of separation that is mentioned in the riwayat right up to Juruf, seven kilometers outside Medina. Seven kilometers. Rasulullah Sallallahu is walking with Mu'az. Finally he reaches Juruf. Ya Mu'az, Asa Allah talqani ba'da ami hadha. Wa la'allaka tamurru bi masjidi hadha wa bi qabri. He says, Mu'az, after this year you will see me no more. When you come back to Medina Munawara, you will not find me. You will find my masjid and you will find my qabr. When Mu'az hears this, فَبَكَى Mu'ad جَشْعًا لِفِرَاقِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ He burst into tears. Couldn't bear the pain of separation from Rasulullah. Sobbing and crying. Allah's Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi averts his gaze, looks towards Medina. Why? Because if Mu'az could see the face of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his grief would get exacerbated. Why? Because the tears are pouring down the cheeks of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi also. The pain of separation from one one Sahabi. Ya Mu'ad, la tabki, averts his gaze. And then he says, O oh, Mu'az, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. Inna awla nasi bi al muttaqoon. Man kanu wa haythu kanu. You and I, Muslims of the 14th centuries of Islam, youth of South Africa, youth of the entire world, reciters of kalima, followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through the barakat, through the, through the blessing of the Qurbani of Mu'az bin Jabal, are given a nuskha, nabawi nuskha, nabawi prescription, direct from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O Mu'az, inna awla nasi bi al-muttaqoon, man kanu wa haythu kanu, wherever, whoever, whenever, camel age, space age, rocket age, Africa, Middle East, Europe, Asia, America, wherever, whoever, you will be close to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if you will come unto taqwa. If you will make your day the day of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Your night the night of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mu'az bin Jabal, when he goes to Yemen, first thing, Ya Ahl al-Yaman, Ya Ahl al-Yaman, Ya Ahl al-Yaman, Ana Rasulu Rasulillahi ilaykum. O people of Yemen, I am the Rasul of the Rasul of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who has been sent to you. No other ummat had this. No other ummat had this. Ana Rasulu Rasulillah. Ulama say, 
Rasulullah, what does it mean? Messenger of Allah. One who delivers the message of Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They say, what is the amal? What is the action? That is the misdaq. That is the living testimony of this title and laqab. Rasulullah. They say it is the amal of da'wat and tabligh. Dawat and tabligh is the mistaq of Rasulullah. Ana Rasulu Rasulillahi ilaykum. I am the Rasul of the Rasul of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who has been sent to you. This, we were sent, selected, chosen several thousand years before this ummah could come into existence. Allah addresses Dawud alayhi salam. Ya Dawud, inni faddaltu ummata Muhammad ala al-ummami kulliha. وَسَنَنْتُ لَهُمُ السُّنَنْ أَلَّتِي سَنَنْتُهَا عَلَى الْأَنْبِيَاءِ وَافْتَرَدْتُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْفَرَائِدِ أَلَّتِي افْتَرَدْتُهَا عَلَى الْأَنْبِيَاءِ O Dawood, I have given fazilat, rank, superiority, status, nobility to the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over every other Ummah. I made sunnat upon them, sunnat of Anbiya. I made farz upon them, fariza of Anbiya. Allah in the Quran, when Allah speaks of Anbiya, Quran uses the word ijtiba. Who ijtiba, this word is used for Anbiya alayhi salatu wa salam. Adam alayhi salam, thumma jtabahu rabbuhu, fataba alayhi wa hada. Yunus alayhi salam, fajtabahu rabbuhu, fajalahu min as salihin. Ibrahim alayhi salam, ijtabahu wa hadahu ila siratim mustaqim. Yusuf alayhi salam, wa kathalika yajtabika rabbuk. The Ummah, the galaxy of Anbiya, Ijtabaynahum wa hadaynahum. And for the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for you and I, Huwajtabakum, Allah chose you. I made sunnat upon them, sunnat of Anbiya, farz upon them, fariza of Anbiya. And if they will fulfill this, if they will fulfill this, Hatta yatuni yawm al-qiyamah wa nuruhum mithlu nuri al-anbiya. They will come to me on the day of judgment and I will give them nur like the nur of the anbiya. I will give them nur like the nur of the anbiya. My respected brothers, don't look left, don't look right. The clock of life is ticking. You're standing up, you're giving your name, this is not a promise. There's no legal ramifications or repercussions. What this is, this is dua. Not you, not I can take one step out in Allah's path without the acceptance of Allah. So this is dua. Ya Allah, accept me. This is investment for our whole life. This is to set us in the correct direction. So don't look left, don't look right. Those who haven't been for four months, we want nakat cash now. Who is ready from this majma? From the heart, stand up. Ya Allah, accept me. Ya Allah, accept me. Come and respect to them. Come my, br- my beloved brothers, come my brothers, Bismillah, those brothers that are writing can stand up. It's been a long month for the youth, examinations, and today also they travel from long distances. Allah Pak accept, come my brothers, four months in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, youngsters are going and coming, don't get left out, Allah Pak will accept you. Mashura brothers sat down, they spoke about four months, they say we want 107 youngsters. 107 youngsters came in the mashura that we want them to go out in the path of Allah. Stand up and proceed to your right, my dear brothers. Proceed to your left, inshallah, the, the four months board is there. The brothers are waiting to receive you. Bismillah, proceed there. Don't sit down. Come, no, my brothers. not well, that's going to take you by. Our jamaat Continue. was in Malawi last week. Our jamaat was in Malawi, they were giving us kar guzari. Brothers, they, they have a small plot of ground, they collect grain. They say some houses, the person had 12 bags of grain, that was the food for the whole year. He needed 6 bags of grain to go out in the path of Allah. The wife will say, if my husband, if I give you these 6 bags of grain, there's no more food in the house. They give a targheeb, that type of kurbani, right on our doorstep. They don't know where their next meal is going to come from. No water and lights, no electricity. Yet the ishtima took place. 95, 4 months cash jamaats came out in the path of Allah. Mashal, mashal. My respected brothers, what are we waiting for? Come my respected brothers. Brothers, don't leave the gathering. This is an important part of the entire program. The tashkil to go out in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To stand up, mashallah, 4 months brothers. Bismillah, Allah will reward you my brothers. Each and every one of you, there's so much of qualities within you. There's so much of good within you. You'll go in the path of Allah for four months. All of this will come out. Like how diamonds come out from a mine. Your valuable qualities will also show. Bismillah. Stand up brothers. As the brothers are giving their name, don't sit down. Proceed to the Tashkil section. 
Come brothers. On the extreme section of the masjid, they are receiving the brothers for four months. Bismillah, continue. Continue. There should be a stream of brothers, non-stop going in the part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My young brothers, today people are talking about teams. People are talking about goals. People are talking about amassing in different places. And thousands of people are looking at the teams. When am I going to become the team that works for the goal of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? When am I going to give myself for this? Come my brothers, this is your opportunity. Muaz bin Jabal radiallahu anhu, as Hazrat Mulana spelt it out, that life that he had in his 30s, towards the end of his life, a young man gives it for the cause of Rasul Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So many hundreds of years down the line, we still take his name with respect. You will give for Allah. You will give for the deen of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you in this world. Bless you at the time of death. Bless you in the cover. And that day, when you meet your Nabi, you will see, my dear brothers, what and what you won't get, including the shade under the arsh of Allah. Come, my brothers, four months in the part of Allah. Our Zimidar brothers should encourage the youngsters. This is a time that the whole world is putting their hands on the youngsters back. Go in this direction. Do this. You'll achieve that. Go there. You'll get this. This time show them. Go out in the part of Allah. What you'll get. Allah will grant you that hidayat. Allah will open up the way for you. Come my brothers. Four months in the part of Allah. Now my dear brothers. Touch kill for 40 days. All those brothers for four months, stand up, Bismillah, proceed, proceed to the Tashkil section. Come brothers, those brothers sitting on this side, Hayal Salah, you all proceed also for four months, MashaAllah. Don't remain here, go to the Tashkil section. My dear brothers, this is an important part that Mashura brothers, they have said, we want 250 brothers for 40 days in the next coming days. Come my brothers, who's ready for chilla? 40 days in a part of Allah, Bismillah. Stand up and give your name, Bismillah. Stand up, stand up, mashallah. Stand up, youngsters. Allah, will, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you. He'll bless your parents, bless your locality, give you barakat in your risk, what and what you'll achieve. Stand up and go to the second section, that is tashkil. Mashallah, 40 days in a part of Allah, chilla in the part of Allah. One, one chilla is 40 days, and there's nine 40 days in one year. Nine 40 days in one year. Now work out a youngster that is about 20 years old, 180 of this has passed in his life. We are asking for one now, my brothers. It's coming in your heart. They say when you select it for a team, that is the time to play. When the tashkil is coming in the heart, don't sit down and don't say tomorrow, tomorrow doesn't come. Today is the tomorrow of yesterday. Come my brothers, stand up in the part of Allah, who's ready? Come my brothers, mashallah, bismillah. Youngsters, Allah Pak will bless you. In the Sahaba Ridwan al-Ta'ala Ali Majma'een, Musa bin Umair gave everything he had to this extent, my brothers, at the time when he's passing away, the sheet that is lifted, that's pulled to cover his, his head, his feet are exposed. And when he's covering the feet, the head is exposed. Finally, finally the feet are covered with leaves, my dear brothers. This was the condition which Sahaba gave everything. Today we are saying, go with your beddings, go with the vehicles, all this type of qurbani won't be taken for you. Tabligh is enjoyable. Tabligh for the youngster when he comes back and he gives his report, as you have heard after Asr, is not a dry effort. You will meet people, you will learn from them, you will see places, your experience will grow, your closeness to Allah, your obedience of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The want of the commands of the Quran, that will come alive. The tabligh will bring vibrancy in that life of the youngster. Today, sitting behind the technological gadgets, sitting at home, it has become a dry life, no happiness. You ask a youngster, you want happiness? He's trying to go to exotic destinations for happiness. Go to the destination that is on Mashura. See what happiness Allah will give you. Stand up for chillah, my brothers. Come, 40 days in a part of Allah. <coughs> Bismillah, proceed, proceed, brothers. Tashkil brothers are all over. Send the brothers for 40 days, mashallah. This is Makbul Majma. Come my brothers, mashallah. Go my brother. This is the time. This is the time for you. This is the second section that is for 40 days in a part of Allah. Allah will accept you. Come my brothers. There's more and more brothers. When the time of Tashkil comes, that thought lingers, should I go or shouldn't I go? Ask that youngster, ask that person that went in a part of Allah, that when... He, he, you know, he hesitated and finally made up his mind. He cries. 
There's many occasions of crying. One of the occasions a person can cry is out of joy also. That finally I found what I'm looking for. So brothers, come another 50 names for 40 days. Mashallah. Bismillah. <coughs> come, come my friends. Don't remain standing. Go into the Tashkil section. Come brothers, it's coming in your heart. Yeah, yeah, in the center, mashallah. Come, come my brothers. Allah will accept you. Allah will give you barakat. Brothers, while the 40 day Bhasatis are going there, we have also got a tashkil that is for 20 days and less. 20 days and less. Can we have those brothers standing up, mashallah? Your kurbani is also accepted. Your kurbani is also appreciated. You have got these qualities in you. You want to give time. So the Masura brother said, give them a chance. 20 days in a part of Allah. 10 days in a part of Allah. 15 years and above. Come my brothers. There should be nobody left here. The Tashkil section should be filled. It should be brimming with names. So much so, like it was described, the paper should get finished and the pen should run dry. But the Tashkil should not stop. So it should not stop. That's how many brothers should move. Go my brothers, mashallah. Clear this entire section. Go. Go in the part of Allah. Bismillah. Come my brother, go. Allah will accept you. Come brothers, clear this section. Go. 20 days. 10 days in the part of Allah. Your jamaat that have come complete. This is a time for you. Move in the part of Allah. You will move. You will improve. Allah will take work from you. Many a times a person asks, Somebody that is 50 years, 30 years in Tabliq, how did you come? He says, you know that one program that took place in Junction, that one program that took place in Grey Street, today your Tabliq journey is starting. This time you're coming out in the part of Allah for 10 days. To you it might seem it's only 10 days, but the journey up ahead, the different parts of the world that Molana described, Allah will take you to these parts of the world. So come brothers, 10 days, Bismillah. 10 days in the part of Allah. Come, come my brothers. Don't remain standing here. Clear this entire section. Come brothers, Bismillah. Come my brothers, 14, 15 years of age. Allah will accept you. Go to the Tashkil section. My Muhammad is waiting for you all. Go there my brothers. What about brothers from here? Mawlana, make them ready inshallah. Tashkil satis, Bismillah, take them. Usher them towards the Tashkil section. Allah will accept inshallah. Brothers, last tashkil, five days and three days. Who says we're ready for five days and three days? Come. Bismillah, there's some brothers, mashallah. Teachers up, take them to the tashkil section. Molna, take them to the tashkil section, mashallah. Muhammad, guide them this way, mashallah. Send them there, inshallah. Send them there. Allah, accept brothers. Some of you have traveled from this afternoon. You have come from hundreds of kilometers. We have seen you. You are tired. But for Allah's sake, I'm standing up. For Allah's sake, I'm giving what I have within me. Allah will bless you. You will see unimaginable amount of benefit. Come my brothers, mashallah. Bismillah, bismillah, come. Five days and three days. Go my brothers, mashallah. That, that, listen to that man, go with him, mashallah. He's encouraging you for good. Youngsters over here in the front, mashallah. Mashallah, come brothers with the blue kurta, bismillah. Go, go, go. Allah accept you, come. Mali Musa, send them inshallah. Allah pa kabul, mashallah. Quite a few. This is it, my brothers, mashallah. Enough time will be given for wudu. Enough time will be given for a person to sort himself out. This is a tashkil time, it's an important time. Molana went to the limit to explain to us our challenges. How will this come right, youngsters? I have to make effort. Walladina jahadu fina. Allah will open up roads of hidayat. Some of us just say we came for the program. I came because my masjid brothers brought me. I came because my mother said I must come. I came because my father said I must come. But now that I'm here, I'm seeing hundreds of youth, hundreds of youth going in the part of Allah. <coughs> How can I get left? How can I get left in this world? Allah save us, but when autographs are being given, at that time a person is wishing that even if you got a piece of paper or a small receipt, an autograph must be signed there. Today your wish should be that a tashkil paper should have my name. That is my autograph, my brothers. So who just came for the program? But he said, I just came to hear the talk. I wanted to learn something. <coughs> but 
I'm taking cue from this and going, Mashallah, come my brothers, Mashallah, that's it. More and more stand up. Allah kabool, Mashallah. Allah kabool, Mashallah. Allah accept, my dear brothers. Allah Ta'ala will make us see that day when we meet Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and all the challenges that were in front of us, but for the sake of Imam Al-Anbiya, Ahmad Mustafa, Muhammad Mustafa, for the sake of his deen, I sacrifice this youth. Many youth are saying, Molna, I got a holiday. Our Haji Bhai Padre Rahmatullah says, turn the holiday into holy day. Don't have holes in this holiday. That if you come back, you can't repair them. Sometime with a puncture, you can fix it up with a pet. <coughs> Sometime you can fix it up with a mushroom pet. But sometimes you cannot fix that puncture. Don't get punctured in this vacation that a person after that is damaged. And another excuse the youngsters gives that I'm working for my pocket money. Allah brought you into this world. What pocket you had, my brothers? What pocket you had? In Arabic you say, Jaib. Don't look at your Jaib. Don't look at your Jaib. Look at the Ghaib. This is the time to spend in the path of Allah. This is the time to give my, myself over for the sake of deen. Whether it's four months, whether it's forty days, whether it's ten days, I must give it my all. When I will give, when I will give, Man amalana rabiha, who works for our cause, who works for our mission, Allah will give you the commission. In this world, a youth, Mulana spoke extensively about abstention, the one that, that has persistence in resistance, Allah will send his assistance. Come my brothers, mashallah, more and more. Give your name to the tashkil brothers. It's not a time to talk. It's not a time to hold up the tashkil. Go all out, my, my, my dear friends. Yeah. Brothers, one more tashkil. Mona Umar Saab, rahmatullah alayhi rahmatan wasiya, wa ala Allahu maratibahu, wa ala Allahu maratibahu, you should say. After tashkil, you say, who will read five times a day namaz with jamaat? Put your hands up, inshallah. Come, my brothers, five times a day with jamaat in the masjid. To the final tashkil, Hazrat Mawlana will make dua. After that, enough time will be given for uh, relieving yourself, wudu, and come and copy the sunnah. No, no, it's all right. Man. What time is Isha? Just give us a nine o'clock. Is that? Yeah, I think it's right. Nine o'clock. But just tell the time. Yeah, I think it's right. Yeah. Nine o'clock. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin. Allahumma lakal hamdu kama anta ahlu. Fasalli wa sallim ala sayyidina اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم إنا ندعوك الله وندعوك الرحمن وندعوك البر الرحيم وندعوك بأسمائك الحسنى كلها ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم أن تغفر لنا وترحمنا لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم اغفر لأمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم ارحم أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم تجاوز سيئات أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم أصلح أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم اهد أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم اهد الإنس والجان اللهم افتح أبواب الهداية اللهم أخرج الناس من الظلمات إلى النور وجنبهم الفواحش ما ظهر منها وما بطن اللهم أصلح شباب المسلمين اللهم استخدمنا واستخدمهم لخدمة دينك بالإخلاص والاستقام والعافية اللهم خذ بناصيتنا للبر والتقوى وعذنا من شر الشيطان وشركه يا قوي يا عزيز اللهم إنك تسمع كلامنا وترى مكاننا وتعلم سرنا وعلانيتنا ولا يخفى عليك شيء من أمرنا نحن البائسين الفقراء المستغيثين المستجيرين الوجلين المشفقين المقرين المعترفين بذنوبنا نسألك مسألة المساكين ونبتهل إليك ابتهال المذنب الذليل وندعوك دعاء الخائف الضريب دعاء من خضعت لك رقبتهم وذل لك جسمهم ورغم لك أنفهم وفاضت لك عبرتهم 
اللهم لا تجعلنا بدعائك شقيا وكلنا رؤوف رحيما يا خير المسؤولين ويا خير المعطين اللهم انا نسالك رضاك والجنه اللهم انا نسالك الفردوس الاعلى وما قرب اليها من الاقوال والاعمال ونعوذ بك من سخطك وغضبك ونعوذ بك من عذاب جهنم وما قرب اليها من الاقوال والاعمال ربنا اصرف عنا عذاب جهنم ان عذابها كان غراما انها ساءت مستقرا ومقاما ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم اجعل اجتماعنا هذا اجتماع مرحوما واجعل تفرقنا من بعدي تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا ولا منا ولا معنا شقي ولا محروما برحمتك ومنك وفضلك وكرمك يا أكرم الأكرمين وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه سيدنا ومتعنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والحمد لله